In today's video, we are going to do a tour of how to set up Salesforce Scheduler. We'll spend the bulk of our time in the Scheduler Setup Assistant setting up and then creating a simple appointment. At the end, we'll circle back to some additional settings you can enable to fine-tune Scheduler. Salesforce Scheduler gives you the tools to simplify appointment scheduling in Salesforce. Create a personalized experience for scheduling customer appointments, in person or by phone or video, with the right person at the right place and time. In today's video, we are going to do a tour of how to set up Salesforce Scheduler. We'll spend the bulk of our time in the Scheduler Setup Assistant setting up and then creating a simple appointment. At the end, we'll circle back to some additional settings you can enable to fine-tune Scheduler. The Scheduler Setup Assistant helps you customize Scheduler for your scheduling needs. If your needs are simple, you can use the Assistant exclusively. For more complex requirements, use the Setup Assistant for proof of concept and then create your records more efficiently by following the tabs along the top in order or by importing data. As always, we recommend you test in a sandbox environment before adding records in production. We'll set up the scheduler to book appointments for customers who would like a general consultation in our San Francisco office. We'll set this up so that we can make appointments with Harry Long, the service agent who takes these calls in San Francisco. Start by finding Salesforce Scheduler Setup in the App Launcher. You can see the objects as we move across the screen. Then the assistant helps us tie all these objects together, so we can create the appointments we need. You can see the progress bar update as you complete tasks. At the top, we see a sample service appointment. Click into this at any time to see what the appointment scheduling flow should look like when it's finished. The Setup Assistant is broken into four sections, and we recommend you work through all the tasks in each section. The first section is our Getting Started section. These are the preliminary tasks you'll need to take care of as you set up Scheduler. The first prompt is Set Up Permissions. Staff members who will serve as bookable resources need to have the right Salesforce license and permissions in order for Scheduler to assign them. This link takes us to Salesforce Setup where we can create the permission set we need. One thing to be aware of is there are different licensing requirements and permissions for resources who staff appointments and resources who book appointments, including users who self-serve through an experience cloud or your website. Your account executive can help you figure out exactly what licenses you need. Today, we'll create a permission set that we'll assign to Harry Long who is a Salesforce Service Cloud user that will be staffing our appointments. Let's create our new permission set. For label, we'll say Scheduler Bookable Resource. For license, we'll select the Salesforce Scheduler license type. Now we need to enable the assigned user as bookable in system permissions. Since we selected Salesforce Scheduler license, this permission is already filtered and we just need to enable it and save. Now we can assign it to Harry. Click Manage Assignment. Click Assign User. Select Harry Long. Assign. Now we'll click back to the Setup Assistant. Notice that there are resources linked for each step in the Assistant, so make sure to consult them as you set up Scheduler, as well as the general trailhead resources on the right-hand panel. Operating hours represent the opening and closing times that you can assign to a particular location. You may have multiple locations each with different hours. So, for instance, your warehouse opens at 7 a.m. and closes at 4 p.m., while your branch office is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m and you may even have virtual locations. You can link operating hours to multiple schedule types, which is a real time saver if you need to update hours down the line. We'll keep things simple today and set up operating hours for the West Coast. We'll start by entering the name West Coast Office Hours. Time zone is PST. We'll set service appointment windows for each weekday. You have the option to set concurrent scheduling here. What that means is that multiple people are allowed to book the same appointment time in the event of, say, a group training or webinar. You can also enable a hybrid of individual and concurrent scheduling, 
say if Harry has individual appointments Monday to Thursday and runs group sessions on Fridays. Concurrent scheduling needs to be enabled in scheduling settings, and I'll show you where that is at the end of this demo. Now we've created our West Coast office location and set the operating hours. A service territory or location is where our reps will be conducting the appointment, in this case, our San Francisco office. For name, we'll enter San Francisco office. We'll assign the West Coast operating hours we just set in the previous step. Click Active. Fill in address, 415 Mission Street, SF, California, 94105. Now we've created a location and linked it with our West Coast operating hours. While it's a few more steps to set them up separately, this allows you the flexibility to assign the same operating hours to multiple locations. Say if we had another office in Seattle, which is also on West Coast hours. We've completed our first section with setup steps. Now let's move on to the service resource and skill section. This is where we make sure we have the right person with the right skills at the right place. Service resources are the people who will be booked for an appointment, so your service technicians, bankers, consultants, or whatever makes sense for your business. For this example, we'll focus on people resources, but be aware that you can add resources for assets or physical resources, such as conference rooms or equipment. Here is where we add Harry Long as a resource. For name, enter Harry Long. Active should be checked. User is Harry Long who is already a Salesforce user with the appropriate permission set assigned. For resource type, we'll choose Agent. Save. Now I want to talk about an object called Service Territory Members. This is a junction object that allows you to link resources to one or more locations. As a best practice, you should always assign a location to every resource. Since we just created Harry Long as a resource, it's auto-filling when we click the new Service Territory Member button. Service Resource is Harry Long, auto-filled. Service Territory is San Francisco Office. Territory Type. Primary just means that this is where the resource works most often. You can also assign secondary territories if needed. Operating Hours is West Coast Hours. For start date, enter a start date that in the past, so we'll fill in yesterday's date. This is ongoing, so we'll leave end date blank. Save. Next, we'll create a skill. Skills are a great way to determine what topic the appointment is about, who on your team has expertise in that area, and how skilled a user must be to take appointments. We're going to create a skill called consulting, and make sure that our resource Harry has that skill assigned so he can take these appointments. Now we will create a skill in Setup that we can reference throughout the scheduler and other places in Salesforce. You'll see that my demo environment already has some skills set up. Notice the variety of skills you can have here. We've got language skills like English and French, as well as technical skills like hydraulic failures. We're going to create a consulting skill by clicking New. Enter consulting as the name. That's all we need to do here. Scheduler doesn't assign user or profiles to skills from this interface, so we can leave the bottom section blank and just save. Now we'll click back to the Setup Assistant and begin where we left off by assigning the consulting skill we just created to our resource Harry Long, as well as assigning him a skill level. For Service Resource, we'll stick with Harry Long, automatically populated. For Skills, we'll find and select Consulting, We'll assign him a skill level of 7 on a scale from 0 to 10, and say he's enabled as of yesterday. Enter start date. Save. And now we're done with our second section. Let's move on to the service appointments section. Here is where terminology starts to get a little tricky, so I'll explain as we move through this section. We're going to set up several individual pieces and then tie them together to make scheduling appointments more intuitive and efficient. The first thing we'll do is create a topic. In scheduler language, this means that we are going to create a work type group. A work group type is essentially a broad topic for the appointment that is meaningful to your users, such as home loans or investments. We'll name this General Consults. The description displays to the user in the appointment workflow, so you may want to fill this in if the topic will not be self-evident to the person booking the appointment. Our group type can remain as default. Make this active. Additional information are subtopics that you can set up, 
which will be displayed as a checkbox with the topic in the scheduling flow. So for the topic of banking, you could set up a checking account or personal loan to provide some additional information as to what the appointment will be about. We don't need any additional information for general consulting, so we'll leave this blank for now. Save. Next is where we can set our operating hours and time slots. We already set our operating hours when we created our West Coast hours, so we can skip this step. Here's where we bring together our appointment topics and locations, making it easier to create standard appointment scheduling. Work types allow you to set parameters such as the default appointment duration, time buffers before and after your appointment, and the appointment availability horizon. For work type name, fill in general consulting. For duration type, select minutes. Estimated duration is 60. We can also set up the service appointment topics and appointment intervals. First, you have the option to block time before or after your appointments for preparation, travel, etc. You can also specify the interval between appointments. For example, if you don't want someone booking same-day appointments. Save. This brings you to Service Appointment in Object Manager, specifically the Appointment Type field, which is a pick list. If you scroll down, you'll see the default Appointment Type pick list values, and you'll see Virtual and in a center as the two values. Let's add a new value of Phone Call as one of the appointment types. Click New. Enter Phone Call. Save. The last three steps in this section help you link the skills, topics, templates, and locations that we've established in the right order. First, we can define skill requirements for work type or templates to ensure that appointments are assigned to service resources with the right skills. We'll stick with the consulting skill requirement for our general consulting work type. We can also add a skill level requirement if needed. Now we'll connect the topic to our template. This is pretty straightforward. All we are doing here is connecting our general consult's appointment topic to our general consulting work type. Save. The last step is to assign a work type template to a location. You may perform very different work in different business locations, such as a retail shop or a service center. So now we'll just confirm that we want to assign the San Francisco Office Service Territory to the general consulting work type. Save. We've now completed that large third section to define the parameters for our appointments, and we're almost done. If you want booking staff to be able to schedule appointments from a record page, you'll need to include the Schedule Appointment Lightning Action in the page layouts. I won't be showing you how to do it here, but if you've never done it before and need guidance, you can find detailed instructions in the resource link provided. With that, we're ready to see our outbound appointment in action. Click Schedule a Service Appointment to launch the scheduler flow. Select Burlington Textiles Corp of America as the account. We can find our service resource in several ways. We'll choose work type group, appointment type, or service territory. Choose the general consult topic that we created. For appointment type, select the phone call appointment type. For service territory, we'll enter the zip code of our San Francisco office, 94105. Now the San Francisco office location pops up and we can select it. We can select our service resource, Harry Long here. We have all of the available time slots, so we'll select one of those. Now we can review our service appointments. You can add optional service resources here and collect some other information if you would like. You can add any fields to the service appointment object if you need to collect additional information when you are booking the appointment. Once you're set, click Next and Finish. If you scroll up, you'll see that our indicator bar is almost complete. The reason is, we skipped a couple steps in the interest of time, but it's still a good visual indicator. The last thing I want to show you is Salesforce scheduler settings in Setup. Here is where you can enable some optional scheduling features. Let's just review a few highlights. Event management, which lets users add Salesforce scheduler service appointments to their Salesforce calendars. Once you toggle on event management, you have the option to enable block resource availability so that resources can block additional time before or after appointments. Appointment distribution, which allows you to distribute appointment schedules more evenly among your service resources. Publish appointments as platform events, which helps you integrate your appointments with an external system. 
Enable multi-resource schedule to let users add more than one service resources to an appointment. Concurrent scheduling, which lets you schedule multiple service appointments to a single time slot, which is handy for events such as webinars or group trainings. Operating hours for service territory members for work type groups. This is a mouthful but what it does is allow you to set hours for individual service resources. Note that once you've enabled this one, you can't disable it, so you'll have to complete some preliminary steps. Salesforce Scheduler for HealthCloud. There are some additional features if you want to use Scheduler to manage clinic appointments. I also want to show you assignment policies. If you use appointment distribution, you can define assignment rules here, say by total duration of appointments or weekly number of appointments. Scheduling policies allow you to configure how service resources are filtered and time slots are calculated. You can edit the default appointment scheduling policy and select the rules that you want to enforce. If you want to use different sets of rules, you can create custom scheduling policies and associate them with flows or use them in API calls. But this would be a more advanced use case, possibly requiring developer support. Thank you for joining us today as we set up Salesforce Scheduler with the Setup Assistant. We hope you found this a helpful overview. For more detailed information and resources, visit help.salesforce.com or explore the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com.